Could Lewis Hamilton take his third win in a row in 2018? Could Vettel and Ferrari win their first race since Silverstone? And could Red Bull do anything from the fourth row of the grid? Find out in this video. The start of the race at Spa was very exciting, but after that it did turn into a very boring race. A race that Sebastian Vettel went on to win. Vettel wins from Hamilton 2nd, Verstappen 3rd, Bottas 4th and Sergio Perez in 5th. Then it's Ocon 6th, Grosjean in P7, Magnussen 8th, Gasly 9th and Marcus Ericsson in P10. Then Carlos Sainz, Sergei Sorokin, Lance Stroll, Brendan Hartley and Stoffel van Dorn all missed out on points. With the retirements being Daniel Ricciardo, Kimi Raikkonen, Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso and Nico Hülkenberg. But now let's see how the top teams did in the race. When it mattered on race day, Mercedes just did not have the pace to compete with Ferrari. As Hamilton on the first lap was passed by Sebastian Vettel on the Kemmel straight. And from then on in, there was nothing really Mercedes could do. They tried to undercut Vettel at the first pit stop, but it did not work. And by the end of the race, Lewis Hamilton would finish over 10 seconds behind Vettel. For Valtteri Bottas though, he got the best result possible in the Grand Prix. By finishing up in P4. As he slowly but surely got past the midfield teams to get that 4th place. But after the race, he was punished for a first lap collision with Sergei Sorokin. After gently going into the back of him at the first corner on the first lap. But despite Mercedes getting pole position on the Saturday, they have a lot of work to do. Ferrari right now clearly have the fastest car, and if Mercedes want to win the title, they have to improve that car a lot. After a not so great Saturday, Sunday was very good for Ferrari, with Sebastian Vettel dominantly taking victory at Spa. And the race for him was won on the first lap when he passed Lewis Hamilton on the Kemmel straight, a vital overtake that he had to make at the time. And once Ferrari covered off Mercedes at the first pit stop, there was no stopping Sebastian Vettel, as he destroyed Hamilton in the second stint of the race. And this was a very deserved win. For Kimi Raikkonen though, his bad luck continues. On the first lap, when he was minding his own business, Daniel Ricciardo hit the back of him, which for Kimi caused a puncture on his car, but had to retire soon after because of severe damage to his car. He has been very unlucky this weekend. But for Ferrari going into their home race at Monza, they look very, very good. And are definitely favourites for that race. Sunday went on to be a better day than Red Bull was expecting. With Max Verstappen deservedly finishing in third place. After brilliantly getting past the two Force Indias to do so. And his overtake on Esteban Ocon especially was very, very good. But his teammate Daniel Ricciardo had a miserable race. First, his rear wing was broke after that massive accident at Turn 1. And then he was stuck in the pits for two laps to try and repair his car. And even though he did get back out, it was a pointless exercise. And soon after, he would retire from the race. But with Red Bull getting a podium at a power circuit, this is a very good result for the team. Let's see though how this race has affected the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton still leads, but now only by 17 points with Sebastian Vettel in 2nd and Kimi Raikkonen still in 3rd. But now Valtteri Bottas is very close behind in 4th, with Verstappen in 5th and Ricciardo in 6th. Now though, let's see how the midfield teams did at Spa. McLaren's race went on to be even worse than their qualifying performance, with Nico Hülkenberg taking out Fernando Alonso on the first lap, ending any real chance of points for McLaren. And then Stoffel van Dorn at his home race finished last of all the runners. I don't see how van Dorn is going to keep his place at McLaren. But once again McLaren have put in a very bad performance. And it will not get any better at the next race in Italy. It was also very bad for Renault. As on the first lap Nico Hülkenberg caused that massive crash. By simply getting way too deep on the brakes into turn 1 and rightfully now has a 10 place grid penalty for the next race. It was clearly his fault, no doubt about it. But Carlos Sainz, who did complete the race, did not really have any pace. Finishing in P11, but only just about beating the two Williams. He has had a very poor weekend. And that pretty much describes Renault's weekend. Where has the pace gone in this Renault car? 
They need to find out where it's gone because I do not see this time next week Renault still being in fourth in the constructors. After a great qualifying for Force India, the race was also very good. Finishing in 5th and 6th place. And as I've said before, they thoroughly deserve that because of the trouble they have gone through in the last few months. And with this result, they have already surpassed Williams in the Constructors. Both drivers this weekend have been absolutely amazing. By putting this car in positions that it's not expected to be in. And at one point on the first lap on the Kemmel straight, it looked as though Force India might take the lead of the race. That is how good these two drivers have been this weekend. And I would not be surprised if they did this again at the next race. Now in the Grand Prix, Williams were actually not that bad. As they weren't too far off the points paying positions. But once again, they have been poor this weekend. This track should suit the Williams car and they have been quite poor. But that's not exactly a surprise. This race for Toro Rosso was a very successful one. With Pierre Gasly surprisingly getting in the points in P9. In a very calm and well-mannered drive from the Frenchman. But I have to say coming from this Grand Prix the Honda power unit has showed how good it is. As Brendan Hartley twice on the Kemmel straight passed the Ferrari powered Sauber of Marcus Ericsson. That was a very surprising sight. And that just proves that Honda in 2018 have made a lot of progress. And I'm sure after seeing that Red Bull are very happy. Let's see though if they can do that again at the Italian Grand Prix. Even though Haas and this race were not best of the rest, it was a very successful race. Because Renault did not score any points, Haas had to score some good points. And they did with Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen respectively in P7 and P8. That is 10 very important points. And they're now only 6 points behind Renault in the Constructors. And it's pretty simple for Haas going forward. All they have to do is finish ahead of Renault in the remaining races. And it does look like they are going to do that. This time next week I think Haas will take that 4th place. And with the way they've been this season, they deserve it. And finally is Sauber who had an okay day with Marcus Ericsson scoring 1 point. In what I would say was quite a decent drive. But the big story for Salva was Charles Leclerc almost being killed by Fernando Alonso's car. And now when it comes to the halo I am going to say this. You cannot deny that it did save Leclerc from quite a serious injury at least. And possibly did save his life. If you're still in denial about this there's nothing I can do to help you. The halo has been proven now to be a success. If you cannot accept that that is your problem not mine. The Halo has done what it's supposed to do. But before I go, let's look at the Constructors' standings. Mercedes now lead by 15 points from Ferrari, with Red Bull clearly in third. Mercedes slowly but surely are moving away from Ferrari. But after this race, Haas are now a lot closer to Renault. There is only 6 points between those two teams. Then McLaren is clearly in 6th with Toro Rosso in P7. Now after Force India's Constructors points were removed, they're now back up to 9th place after this race. And just 1 point behind Sauber. With Williams once again in 10th. The Belgian Grand Prix was really not a classic race. But hopefully this weekend's race in Italy can be a lot better. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back in about 2 hours time with a live Q&A where you guys can ask me questions and I will answer them. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, a link to that is in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what do you think of this video, and comment down below what did you think of the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.